Good morning. Good morning, Sister Elise. Good morning. Good to see you. Just we'll give everyone a moment to come on. Morning, Sister Carolyn. What's going on, Sister Tamu? Good to see you. What's going on, Shamika Crop? Good morning. I am listening to uh, "Behold the Lamb" by Kirk Franklin. I believe in the family. Precious is the Lamb of God. Amen. I love this song. Awesome song. Awesome song. If you never heard it, you better go listen to it. What's going on, Dr. Phillips? Good to see you this morning. going on, Nona, Sister Johnson, Sister Nona, I think you just celebrated a birthday, I believe, happy birthday to you, what's going on, Jason Sims, good to see you, my brother, what's going on, Sister Mary, good to see you. Let's go ahead and get started. Amen. 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 Good to see all of you this morning. Thank you for joining me uh, for Word in the Basement. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, just for this opportunity to be in your presence, Father. Thank you for allowing us to come together and waking us up this morning that we can hear a word from you and how we can be better in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. What's going on, Pastor Dave? It's good to see you. Uh, this morning, usually first Sunday is our church in the basement. We didn't have church in the basement last week. Uh, the concern was that uh, my music team, they're, they're a husband and wife team. One of them did test positive for COVID uh, last week. They had, they was around some people that got COVID and one of them actually tested positive. So just for us to be safe and everybody to be safe, uh, they have to continue to quarantine. Hopefully they'll be back with us. Uh, this month on third Sunday. Uh, so keep that family in prayer. Keep the uh, the Turners in prayer. Amen. As they try to, they say they don't have any symptoms right now, but we're going to pray. And here's the thing. Uh, we got to be careful because guess what? Uh, only one of them tested positive. The other one may test positive. So we just, gonna, we just ask you to be flexible and patient with us. Amen. What's going on, Sister Taisha? What's going on? Good morning, Miss Glenda, good to see you, my neighbor. Uh, just a few um, announcements. Uh, praise be to God. Uh, we just made the announcement that while we're not having church in the basement. Uh, but, however, uh, yesterday we finished shopping uh, for the 13 infants and toddlers uh, for to make sure they get Christmas gifts. We had 13 infants and toddlers that are part of the Young Lives Ministry or Outreach Program that sponsors and mentors, young teenage mothers, were able to get all their children Christmas gifts. Our ultimate goal was to get a $100 uh, Christmas gift for each kid, but we ended up exceeding that. Uh, it is hard to buy anything, and, and, and actually, if you want to do your best with just $100. So I think we ended up spending like $1,600, uh, but we want to thank all of you who gave. You can still give. You can still give. You can still donate. It's not too late to kind of help us offset that, but listen, we were able to accomplish that, praise be to God that God uh, gave us the opportunity and given us the resources as a ministry to be able to bless those young children. Amen. So on uh, the 19th of December, we'll be having, we'll be figuring out something how to deliver those gifts because of COVID. We need to be careful. Uh, so I think we're going to do something like in a parking lot. We're going to have hot chocolate. We're just going to chill out and have the young ladies drive by these young, or have somebody drive because some of these young ladies are not even 16 years old yet, so they can't drive. So hopefully somebody can bring them to get gifts and we'll figure that out. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who give gave to this uh, outreach program, who has given to us, uh, whether you tie, gave, donate. Uh, we don't take nothing lightly here at God to Move. So I just want to praise God for you. Also, you uh, last announcement, you see that I have a Got to Move hoodie. Uh, this comes through uh, Respect for Life uh, business by Isaac Cottoms. He's a African American business owner who makes T-shirts and and uh, pullovers. So he made this pullover. It's got to move uh, 
Hoodie for me. Uh, so if you look him up, he's on my Facebook page, Isaac Cottoms. Uh, great guy, great friend of mine. Uh, he do great work, so I highly recommend him. If you need T-shirts and hoodies made here, Cold Pepper, wherever you are. Oh, so let's go ahead and get started. What's going on, Sister Eliza? Good to see you. Good to see you yesterday. You and Monique yesterday, uh, as you you were out shopping while we were out shopping. But God has a word. I, I want to help some people today. I really want to help some people today. Uh, Matthew chapter two. Matthew chapter two. Uh, Matthew chapter two. What's going on, Drew Sergeant? How you doing? Uh, Pastor Means, uh, good to see you. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. All right, if you're there, let's start with the first verse. I want to read verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to skip down to verses 9 through 12. Uh, verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Let's go down to verse 9. And when they heard the king, they departed. Behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Uh, just for a few minutes, uh, Sister Cheryl, I, I want to tag this text and talk about how to buy someone a gift for Christmas. How to buy someone a gift for Christmas. This season is an awesome season. I love the Christmas season. Uh, uh, I have up and down seasons, but I love Christmas season. I love the whole fact. Once I'm in the mood of Christmas, I'm in that. Uh, I, I'm not a big shopper. I don't like to shop and hang out with my wife like that when she shops. But once a year, once a year, uh, I find it a joy to be able to shop for other people. And 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 during this season, we have to have the mindset that is not about what we get, but about what we give. But even in our giving, even in our giving during this Christmas season, there has to be some thoughtfulness and some well-planned out ways to give people gifts. Because the reality is that, that this is a season of joy. This is a season of 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 making someone happy because what we say is better to give than receive and and we have to have the mindset that when we're giving there's certain mindsets excuse me there's certain mindsets or certain attitude that we should have when we're shopping for people and buying other people's gifts and Many of us, we're some of us, we we we're not good shoppers. We're not good gift buyers. Uh, uh, we take this season for granted. We do things at the last minute. And the reality is, is when we're buying somebody a gift, when we're when we're trying to go shopping, are we really putting the effort in how we're buying gifts for other people? And I know some people have the bad attitude because what we must also understand, yes, Jesus is the reason for the season. But we must recognize that that the season is about giving. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son. So our job during this season is to mock or copy or, or recreate what G God did for us by giving us Jesus by becoming givers. In other words, if God is a giver and Jesus gave his life, then as Christians and as believers during this season, we must be givers also. We have to get away from the attitude that uh, uh, some of us, I know y'all heard this rhetoric uh, and I don't think it's wise rhetoric and I don't really think it's, it's, it's uh, uh, profitable when we say, hey, this is Christmas. I shouldn't have to buy you a gift because it's not your birthday. This is Jesus' birthday. But if you think like that, you are missing the point of what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about giving. 
is yes, Jesus is the reason for the season, but Jesus was a giver. So in actuality, that Christmas is about giving and it's okay to buy gifts for other people. Amen. We, we should be wanting to give gifts, not just, this is not just a season to receive and look what's up under the tree for us. But I find in my life over the years that I find more uh, satisfaction, I find more joy in watching other people open their gifts. But the reality is when we go shopping and we do go get gifts, there, there's, a, there, there's some things and some practices that you must have, amen? When I look at Matthew chapter 2 and, and I look at how these wise men uh, came from very far and, and what they brought to Jesus, there was a thought process on how they presented themselves to the child, how they presented themselves to Jesus. And we have to, and I think we can learn some things that when we're buying gifts, and I saw how many of you, if, if let's be honest, and you can say amen or whatever, how many of you have been disappointed in a gift? How many, not, and you wasn't disappointed uh, uh, because of the, in the gift, because of how much it cost necessarily, you wasn't disappointed in the gift because it's necessarily who it came from. But a lot of times disappointment comes in the gift because we can tell the attitude and the effort that you did when you went and got that gift. And the reality is, is that when you shop for someone for Christmas, you should buy a Christmas gift if you have it financially. Now, if you don't have it financially, there's other things you can do. There's other things uh, uh, that you can be, be a giver in, whether it's giving your time, giving your some of your resource, telling somebody I love you, giving somebody a pass on something that they did wrong. But many people appreciate the effort in the gift more than just the price of the gift. Let, let's walk through this thing. I'm not going to hold you long. Just very simple, practical things. So the first thing you want to do is when you buy someone a gift, you need to understand who you're buying it for. Amen. Look, look what it says. Look, look, now that Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, why the wise men came from the east. And where he is, they said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? When you're buying a gift, the first thing you need to do is recognize who you're buying a gift for. That is very important. Oh, I'm going to help somebody. That is very important. Because what I discovered is you can't buy everyone the same gift. You can't buy everyone the same quality or quantity of a gift. Uh, some gifts are, will have some you, you, meaning. Some gifts will have some uh, 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 a meaningful uh, inspiration to the gift. Some gifts are not meaningful. They're gag gifts or whatever. But you have to know and identify who you're shopping for. In other words, that I can't shop for my wife the same way I shop for my mother or vice versa. I can't shop for my children the same way I shop for my nieces and nephews. You have to be thoughtful in who you're buying your gift for. In other words, that when you're buying a gift for an individual, you need to think about the individual. You need to know something about their personality. You need to know something about who they are. See, they were buying a gift. Their mindset was, we were buying a gift and coming to see a king. We weren't coming to see the queen. We weren't coming to see the workers or the servants. They had the mindset because you know there's certain things that you'll buy a king that you won't buy anybody else. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody today that you gave a disappointing gift. You wonder why your wife is not happy because you bought a gift that she probably wouldn't have or she wouldn't, you know she didn't have nothing to do with it because of what happened is you didn't put no thought into the person that you're buying a gift for. It is difficult sometimes. It is hard, but you have to look inside who you're buying the gift for. In other words, I have uh, siblings and if I buy gifts, I have 10 children between all of them. And let's say back then when they were, when they were getting gifts, now they've grown into adults and got their own kids. But I have to buy them gifts based on their personality and who they are, not just because it's easier for me to buy just a bunch of gifts and let them share it and it be out. You have to be thoughtful to the person. And many of us ladies, let me help you also ladies, let me help you also ladies, you have to know your husband. When you buy this, think of your husband. You don't shop for your husband the same way you shop for your dad and your son. 
There has to be some thoughtfulness. That gift has to be for them. Also, let me help some people with children. Stop buying your children gifts that only you benefit from. Many of us have spent money, all this money on PlayStations. And I want to ask, who is the PlayStation really for? Listen, be thoughtful. Know who you're buying for. Be thoughtful for their, based on their personality, what they like. You know, you if you know what they like, you know what they cherish, go get those things because you know them. I wouldn't dare buy my coworker a gift that's more thoughtful than the gift that I buy my wife or my children. Know who you're buying for. Know uh there's gotta be certain type of reverence. Cause not let me tell you some kids, not every father, the same way, the same effort you put in your mother buying gifts, you need to put that same effort into your daddy. Cause we like gifts too. We don't. We like special gifts too. We don't want gifts that everybody can use. We don't want gifts that uh, that a kitchen appliance. Some people don't want that stuff. Be thoughtful in the who. So if you want to buy someone a gift, know who you're buying it for. Be thoughtful with who they are. But check this out. Cause not only you 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 want to be thoughtful, but look what they did. They said, "Listen, we we want to come and worship him." We gotta have that attitude when you're buying gifts for people. When you look at an individual, let, let's talk about what worship is. We're not talking about worship and praising individuals. Let me be clear. Listen, listen, I don't want you to miss this. When you worship God, there's a difference between praising God and worshiping God. When you praise God, you praise God because you're giving thankfulness or gratefulness for what he's done. When you worship God, you're giving God reverence and praise because of who he is. In other words, worship is like means you're worth it because God is worth it just because he's worth it. We have to have that attitude. In other words, when we go shopping for somebody, shop for them like they're worth it, y'all. Uh, have the attitude like they're worth it. That, that, uh, that my wife is worth me buying this. My child is worth it me buying this. See, see, one thing I love about the Chris Santa Claus concept is that Santa Claus give gifts based on individuals and who they are, not what's cheaper, not what he thinks they should have, but he gives them the gifts because they're worth it. So when you're out here Christmas shopping, whether whether you're doing this and what you're buying, the first thing you have to think in the mind is, guess what? I'm doing this because they are worth it. And if they're and, and, and when they're worth it, you'll give your best. Because when they're worth it, you'll spend some time. But look, not only you want to identify who you're shopping for. I'm trying to help somebody, y'all. But look what the text says. Look what the text says. It says, look, they came all the way from the east. It is believed that these wise men, it was a almost a, a couple of year journey, one or two year journey, just to find Jesus. Just to find, because by the time he was born, now he's a child. So they believe it took some months or maybe a year or two until they found Jesus to give him this gift. They came all the way out of their way. So not only one... You want to identify who you're buying the gift for. Know that they're worth it. Can't buy the same for everybody else. But two, you need to go out your way. Sometimes you got to go out of your way, go above and beyond in order for somebody to have a gift. In other words, don't they may not have that gift at the Walmart you're located at. You may have to drive an hour, maybe two hours. You may have to order online. You may have to start early. You may need to start saving your money in January in order to buy the things in December. But the reality is when you buy a gift, you need to go beyond yourself sometimes in order to make other people happy. In other words, that some of us are, we cannot be lazy Christmas shoppers. Sister Cassandra, Sister Tammy, we, we can't be those type of Christmas shoppers that that if it ain't at this store, they just ain't getting it. Or, or if I can't find it at this store, I remember me and my wife was talking about uh, one of my daughters and she wanted this kitchen set. Uh, I think she was four, maybe five years old. I can't remember. And I was in Virginia. My wife at the time, we wasn't married yet. She was in, uh, I don't think we were married yet, but she was in uh, Arkansas and we're trying to figure out uh, how to buy this gift. And what happened is she couldn't find it in Arkansas. We couldn't find it. So what I had to end up doing is going to Virginia, spending the extra money 
and sending it to Ar sending it to Arkansas and doing what we had to do in order to get the gift. Sometimes, in order to get a person a gift, sometimes you got to go beyond and above. These men travel for years, for miles away just to make sure they present a gift. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, you may not know how. Sometimes this, it's not good enough just putting a, a, a gift in a bag and putting tissue in it. Take the time to wrap the gift. Take it to get it. Gift wrap. Uh, uh, don't just throw it in a box and send it. Sometimes uh, the packaging of how you present to gift is such an awesome way of doing things. It's an awesome way of serving to that you at least tried. Go above and beyond. Go out of the way. And that means also doing Christmas shopping early. Because Christmas shopping, when you shop for people, it takes time. This is not something you do on Christmas Eve. Can I, can I help somebody? Christmas shopping is not, Christmas Eve is not the designated day. Give it, do it some time, do it some months out, two weeks out, days out. Give it some time that you, and, and, and think about it so you can find the perfect gift for someone. I'm trying to help somebody. If you want to buy somebody, so, so think about who you're buying for. Put some effort into it. What's going on, Sister Kim? What's going on, uh, Sister Hicks? Put that effort into it. Because it'll be appreciated. It'll be appreciated. When people know, see, people don't always care about the cost. People don't always care uh, uh, how big the gift is. I know to know that you thought about me when you thought, when you got the gift. You were thinking about me. You were thinking about what I like, which means when you're thinking about what I like and you buy a gift according to my personality, what that does for me, it makes me feel that you are hearing me. People want to be heard. And that's the best way to showing people that they're being heard is by buying them a gift and going above and beyond and helping people and getting their gifts. Don't just be that, that Grinch that goes bit and buy whatever and they don't like it. Then so what? No, man. No. Because guess what? If you give me a gift with a bad attitude, I'm going to have a bad attitude on when I receive it. It's going to go hung up in my, going to get hung up in my closet and I'll probably never wear it. It may be expensive and nice, but I don't like the attitude it was given to me. I don't want that spirit on me. Amen. So lastly, we're going to be done. So look what happens. Oh, matter of fact, we got, we're going to add a little something. Verse 9, so they traveled and they seen the star and they stood on where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. In other words, they were there. They were present. They had joy. They were excited in this season. And I think one of the ways that you can become a better giver on Christmas is to recognize who Jesus is. And see, when you know that Jesus came and died for you and gave you the gift of everlasting life, you will be so excited during this season that if it wasn't for this season, Jesus wouldn't have been here. And it, and it must be a joy. See, giving gifts should not be a pain, but giving should be a joy. Giving should be a joy. And you have to find that. Whether it's money, cars, or whatever, it should be a joy. But check out what they did. So when they get there, they fell down and worshipped him. And then they opened their gifts. They presented their gifts. Let me look what they gave. So one, we talked about uh, how to shop. You want to know who you're shopping for. Because you can't shop for everyone the same way. Be, be methodical about your shopping. Be thoughtful about who you're shopping for. You can't shop for this person the same way you shop for another person. Uh, Secondly, go above and beyond. Do it because you're worth it and then go above and beyond. You know, sometimes you may have to drive an hour to a store to find that perfect gift. Or you may have to go to another mall. Or, or It may take a couple of days. It may take a couple of days, a couple of weeks to actually find that gift, to find the right gift that fit that person. Lastly, they said they bought gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. These were expensive gifts. Sometimes, and I'm not saying all the time, you can't be cheap. Don't always go the cheap route. Ah, I understand. Now, don't get me wrong. Please take care of your money. Don't go uh, spending your credit cards. I, I don't recommend anybody uh, maxing out their credit cards for Christmas. I think that's not wise. I think if you plan, and you remember say going above and beyond in your planning, if you plan in January, like for example, the day after Christmas, you should start planning. Uh, you should start planning your your Christmas shopping the next year. And Sister Kimberly, you might not uh, 
uh, you may not shop at all or whatever, but yeah, but the bottom line is, is that whatever you give cars or whatever you give or whatever, make sure it's thoughtfulness or whatever, even if you're not a person that don't shop. But if you are, you need to be playing it early, saving your money so you don't go into debt. But if you have it, be thoughtful in what you spend. Don't always go the cheap route. Don't always buy the generic. Don't, uh, sometimes when you're shopping for your spouse, let me, let me, let's talk about husband and wives right now. When you talk about husband and wives, uh, it's not always got to buy the most expensive gift, but don't be cheap. Don't be cheap about it. You get what I'm saying? Don't 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 be cheap about it. Uh, give gifts that 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 will last. Uh, when you buy children gifts or whatever, buy them gifts according to their age. But give them gifts that you notice they're not gonna lie. Don't buy them the cheapest bike you can find, and then after, in January the bike is broken. Th be thoughtful in in your money because here's the thing: sometimes, uh, uh, like I said, it don't have to be very expensive. Because, see, you threw me off, Pastor Jeff. <laughs> threw me off, Pastor Jeff. I'm going to need to quit reading these things. But it don't have to be expensive, but it has to be thoughtful in the price. Don't be cheap. If you see something that you can afford, buy it. And, yeah, and I'm glad you said, Melissa, and make sure it comes from the heart. Because you could buy somebody a very expensive gift, but if, but if you got an attitude about it, don't buy it. Don't buy it. It has to come from the heart. It has to be thoughtful. And the reality is that when these wise men, when they decided they were going to present their stuff to gifts, they knew who they were buying for. They're buying for a king. They knew, even though they never met him, they knew the attitude. We're going, we're, we can't just give this child who's the son of God anything. They traveled for miles. They went out of their way. They went above and beyond. And they gave them expensive gifts, nice gifts, gifts that were practical, gold. Look, they gave, not only they gave them gifts, look, there were three types of gifts they gave them. They gave them gold, uh, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is financial for currency. Hey, put some money in people's pocket. That's an awesome gift. Send me a card with some money in it. That's an awesome gift. They sent them frankincense, which is perfume, also is used as a healing agent for healing. Myrrh. Was for his burial. It was anointed on for his burial, burial that represents his death. So what I'm saying is that these gifts can be practical. Give gifts that people can use. Give people gifts that they need. People give people gifts that they want that they can be a blessing. That's how you. This is the awesome season. So Christmas is not just a. You can't just say I'm not buying Christmas gifts because it ain't your birthday. Quit telling them kids you ain't going to get them nothing for they, for Christmas if they don't act right. Here's, here's the thing. Because now you're being worse than Santa Claus. You're being worse than the person you're trying to tell your kids not to believe in. Here's the deal. Let me explain something about Santa Claus. I'm going to, I love the Santa Claus concept. Whenever my child decides she don't want to believe in Santa Claus, that's between her, Santa Claus, and God. Eventually, she'll grow out of it. It is not my place. Because here's the thing, you don't want nobody telling you not to believe in Jesus. So quit telling them, see, here's my thing about the Santa Claus concept I love. Santa Claus represents selfless giving. Amen? He represents selfless giving. He, he's not Jesus. He doesn't represent uh, 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 healing and eternal life. He just, he just an example of selfless giving. He gives selflessly. He takes the time and goes all around the world making sure children, people are happy. We got to have that attitude. The only thing that's different between Jesus, the biggest thing that's different between Jesus and Santa Claus is that Santa Claus only blesses you when you're naughty or nice. We don't want to have that concept. We don't want to have that attitude. But Jesus blesses you regardless. His grace is the greatest gift of all. Because even when I'm good or I'm bad, he gave his life for me. The Bible said he died yet while we were sinners. Oh, what an awesome gift. That even when I didn't deserve it, even when I, I was bad, even when I was on the naughty list, he loved me enough and died. And when I accepted him, he put me on the lambs list. Oh, no, oh, y'all missed that. See, see, I, I don't have to worry about being on a naughty or the nice list because I'm already... In the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb's list because he gave his life for me. 
So because Jesus gave his life for me, because Jesus gave me grace and mercy, I'm not going to predicate whether I give to someone, whether they're good or bad. I'm going to give them the same grace that Jesus gave me. The same grace. Because he first, who am I to tell my children they can't get anything because of their behavior? On Christmas. Now I'm not now you can worry about their birthdays and all that stuff. Don't worry about giving them for their birthdays or taking them out to eat or whatever and buying them Jordans. They might not get no Jordan, but guess what? They may get some pajamas. They're gonna get some underwear. They're gonna get something. Because there's nothing, and here's the thing, and if you don't have it, and, and I'm talking to those who are financially hurt and can't buy your gifts, there's something better. There's something better that you can give them than presents under a tree. You can give them love. Give your children unconditional love. Give your children Jesus. Introduce them to Jesus Christ. That's an awesome gift. Look, put down, look, take two days and put down your cell phones and get off your Facebook and spend some time with your family. That's a great gift. Have a dinner, sit at the table, go for a walk. Those things are free. Those things don't cost anything. See, we think because we don't have money to buy gifts that there's other gifts we can actually give. You can call a friend and say, listen, you know what? I know we had some beef, but you know what? This Christmas, I forgive you. That's a great gift. Because there's people right now waiting on you to call them just to tell them you forgive them. You've been holding grudges. So, see, so what I'm saying? And that's a thoughtful gift. Think about all the people that's in your life that you can give to. It may not be nothing in a package, but it could be something from your heart. A phone call. Hey, I just want to call and check on you. That's a gift. Be thoughtful with it. And guess what? And some of these gifts, even though they don't cost money, they are expensive. Because some of these gifts may cost you your pride. Some of these gifts will cost you, uh, you got to pay some, give up some anger in order to get, pay some of these gifts. Sometimes you may have to be the person that looked like the person that's uh, giving in. It costs. It costs. Love costs. Love costs. And it's always about money. That's how you want to bless somebody this season for Christmas. That's how you want to buy somebody a gift. That's how you want to give a gift this Christmas. I love Christmas because guess what? I'm a giver because Christ gave to me. And he gave me the ultimate thing. He gave his life in order to give me eternal life. And that's the greatest gift. That's the greatest gift. And the only way I can see myself repaying Jesus the best way for me to repay Jesus is how I treat other people in this season. And I hope this helped you. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, I want to extend uh, this gift. I want to extend this gift. Uh, the gift of Jesus Christ. We don't want to assume that everyone knows who Jesus is. But we know that if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe God, raise him from the dead. My Bible says, you shall be saved. That is the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all. I know Whitney has said the greatest gift of all is loving yourself. That's a great gift. But the greatest gift of all is Jesus Christ. Secondly, maybe you don't have a church home. Listen, we would love to accept your gifts. Here at the Move Church, got to move. We'd love to be you, have you be a part of our ministry. We will, we'll, we'll give you our best. We're gonna give you love. We're gonna give you time. We just want to make sure you be so. Now, here's the thing: if the Move Church is not for you, or maybe the place, look, give us an opportunity to find a place for you, and those things will be working itself out. Listen, I'm done. Listen, if you have the time, please share this on your page, create a watch party, whatever you do. Uh, thank y'all for joining uh, prayerfully. Uh, hopefully next week uh, we'll have a surprise guest. Hopefully next week uh, we'll have a surprise guest preacher for us next week, an awesome preacher. Uh, so stay tuned. I don't want to put the name, you know, because, you know, with this COVID and all this stuff, you never know what may happen, may not. But we want you to tune in next Sunday at 9. We have no Bible study Tuesday. I may share something uh, on Facebook. 
Uh, I may share something myself on too, but it's not going to be an official Bible study. So thank you for coming. Lastly, if you would like to tithe, give, or donate to our ministry. Hey, love you too, Pastor Jeff. Love you, man. Uh, thank you for the gift of friendship. Amen. That, that's an awesome thing too. And all you, Sister Rosa, uh, all you people, Lord, thank y'all for the gift of friendship. Man, that, that's an awesome gift in itself, y'all. That is an awesome, Brother Darnell Branks. What's going on, Sister Kimberly? Just just give the gift of friendship. Y'all be surprised how the gift of friendship uh, will take you ways. And I'm talking about that type of friendship that you can call on people. You may not talk every day, but you can call on them when they need you. They, that, that gift of friendship, man, man, let me tell you something. Once you unwrap that, especially for me, if you my friend, you my friend. Uh, now, if you choose to mess up and not call me or whatever, that's on you. Uh, I'm a very, in a way, I hold grudges, but I'm forgiving at the same time. So it just depends on which we could catch me. But down, but this season, man, if you, I don't care what you did to me. If you call and ask me forgiveness, I'm giving it to you. Amen. So listen, we love you. Let us pray. We're going to get out of here. Father God, Lord, we thank you just for being such an awesome God, Father. I pray for everyone that has joined us this morning, Father. Help us to be better, better, better givers. That when we looking for people, giving to people, whether it's through monetary gifts, through practical gifts, through just our hearts and our love and our time, let it be the best we can give, Father, because you gave us the best. Let us be representatives, representatives of you, mockers of you, repeaters of what you've done. We want to be able to give just like you. Father, we bless everyone during this season who do not have it, who are struggling financially due to this COVID and what other reasons, Father. We ask you to cover them, Father God, and that let them know that even if they don't have no money, they still got love. They still got forgiveness. They still got their time. They can still be givers in this season. Thank you for everyone that has given us, giving financially to the Moo Church, everyone that has prayed for us. I pray for every pastor and preacher that will stand this morning through through the means of social media or whether they're inside the church, Father God. I pray for the anointing of God to touch their lives, that they may pour into the people of God that you have put them in charge of. In the name of Jesus, amen. Look, God bless you. May God keep you. If I don't see you again, Merry Christmas, but I'll see you next week. God bless you.